Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Evening Jones. That's what it say right down there. At least it do on my screen. Either way, if you're watching at theeveningjones.com, log in, use the Twitter profile, Facebook profile, whatever kind of profile you got, go ahead and use that once you do. You can participate in our chat room. You can also send in your questions. You can type them out, put them up on the screen, old-fashioned way, or if you got a webcam and headphones, like I got a webcam and headphones, there's a small possibility we can have a conversation. I'd just be worried about whether or not you're going to mess up my money. I'm sure you understand. Um, if you are watching this, I understand that most of you, or a significant number of you, listen to this on a podcast rather than consuming this individual medium live. But for those of you who are watching this live, you may notice that I have on a hooded sweatshirt and I have the hood pulled over my head and I have the headphones over that hood. And that's because it's just kind of chilly outside. Um, guys, right now, it is 65 degrees. But, 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 but uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I haven't even gotten to the worst part yet. Like we've been waking up and the temperature's like in the 50s in the morning. And, you know, you, you, I, I feel like you can't forget that, like, that's the 50s, but, you know, right here on this water. And so you get wind and stuff like that. So, I mean, it, it, they say it's like 55, but it's probably much more like 50, like 1, 52. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. But I just want you guys to know that um, we're down here persevering. We really are. We are down here persevering. Um, we're going to make the best out of this. Um, the sun did manage to come out. You know, in spite of the little chilly temperatures, the sun did come out. It really did. And so, I mean, I don't understand why it is. And you understand, this is going to happen for consecutive days, right? It's going to be a low in the 50s tomorrow also and you know i mean that that doesn't happen here very much right like it's a bit of a, a shock to the system and i just don't understand why it is that i don't see nobody talking about praying for us on the internet i, I don't see no je suis miami and i mean i feel like the the only conclusion that I can draw from this is that a lot more of you are low bottom haters than I ever realized. I mean, I thought a little more of many of you. I did. Um, and, 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 and let's be clear. That's my fault, right? It's my fault that I had the expectations of you that I did. You never told me that this was who you were. I just assumed this of you. And I was mistaken. I really was. Um, and, you know, it's a little weird because I feel like I've, I've built up what I do um, really largely like empathy. Like it's a big, I feel like that's a big part of what I do is empathy. I, I try to come across in that way. And I'm struggling a little bit. Y'all know where to be found. You know what I'm saying? I be donating money when y'all ask me to. Yeah, that's right. You know? But here we are. And I got this hood over my head. It's a little brisk. Not a single one of y'all asked me how I was doing. None of you did. That's cool. Not really. It is. Actually, it's not really cool, right? Like where you are, it is like cold. Like I feel like it's disrespectful for me to say that it's cool when you are so cold. Or as uh, is said in the parlance, uh, brick. It is, it is brick um, where you are. And I hate that for you. I really, really do. Uh, I went to D.C. 
over the weekend. And I got to tell you, it was brick. Like, got there and it was in the 60s. And I got to say, 60s and other places feel warmer than Miami 60s. That's the other part that you have to realize. Like, when they say it's in the 50s here, the 50s here feel cooler than they do in other places. And I'm not making this up because 67, I'm here. And I would, you know, be breaking out the hoodie and stuff like that, 67 in D.C. And I felt like I could have walked around in a T-shirt. It's just a little bit different. So anyway, uh, it was it was brickety brick um, in D.C. Went to the uh, Smithsonian Shrine to Blackness. Um, I I thought that it was pretty well done. Uh, the thing about that museum, I will say, though, is it does to a degree feel like it's in a beta version. And the reason I say I feel like it's in a beta version is like, I feel like you really start getting bang for your buck at the museum when you start having like the special exhibits that come through for a couple months at a time. And right now it just looked like they got, you know, the museum that they started off with, which is trying to run through a like large swath of blackness. And what is, I mean, they got a pretty impressive space, but they're also trying to do a lot relative to the space that they have. So like I've had people, and I've seen people who talk about that as being an almost religious experience and it just kind of like sweeping over them. And I didn't really get that feeling. Um, and I don't have a great answer for why. Like, I don't know why it is that other people were moved in ways that I was not. Um, and I don't know how much of that comes from, like, what your initial position is on the very idea that the museum was being built and kind of being overcome, like, also, we shall overcome type. And... I mean, I think y'all know I don't really get down like that. So maybe I'm just not the person that's going to get swept up in that way. Like, I don't I don't have a great answer for you on that. But I do think it's absolutely worth going to. And I think over the years, watching as it evolves and seeing what comes through there is going to be like, um, I think I do think that that's going to be pretty cool. It is also worth noting, um, man, there's like more stuff in that museum about Obama than there is about Martin Luther King. And I mean... I suppose that a lot of that has to do with the Kings because the Kings is like, yo, we're, we're the ones in the Martin Luther King business. Like we can't just be out here giving the milk away for free. Not to uncle Sam. <laughs> I could imagine there'd be a some level of conflict uh, about that, you know, given some things I, I can see how they would not, but now they ain't really come off very much. Like it is very interesting that um, I think the King is probably the finest, um, person this country has ever produced and there's really not that much of him in that museum it's not and the kids are like nah 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 we we the ones who do that you want to see martin luther king i suggest you watch a couple more commercials anyway um i thought the museum was pretty cool hey how about we answer some of your questions Hmm. It's a lot of good questions here, I have to say. But actually not as many as I thought, but still, I'll come up with one. How would you have gone about releasing slash presenting that 2015, 2005 tax return? Yeah, so I watched that on TV. Cause they was real excited at MSNBC about these tax returns. Um, and I got to wonder, did they always know that all they had was a couple of pages? Right. Or did the man call up and say, Hey, I got Donald Trump's tax returns. And they were like, yo, say no more. He's like, but wait, there's only two, two say no more. All right. Because all they had was two pages and the two pages show what I suppose that Donald Trump did not pay a percentage of his income that you would think would be commensurate with a man of his income level. Here's the thing, though. It said he paid $38 million in taxes. 
So, yes, you can certainly make the argument based on what you had there that there's evidence that Trump isn't really some billionaire, right? Like, yeah, you could totally make that claim and argument and use those couple pages off that tax return to do that. You could. However, in return, Trump says, I pay $38 million in taxes. You have to understand that people are intimidated by big numbers and they are particularly intimidated. Right? Now you get to throwing that around. That man is saying that he is paying $38 million. You're not going to convince anybody that he's not paying his fair share because he can say, I paid $38 million. Like, I'm just telling you right now, that's how the minds of most people work. So, like, if the point of putting out those simple two pages was to show that Trump has paid a percentage that is lower than the 39.6 for someone of his income tax bracket, that gets a great big old nobody cares beat. Like, I mean, that that's not the one. Like, really, so what you're going to tell me is, Rich people find ways to not have to pay as much tax as the full percentage. Because one thing I think that people have to keep in mind here is everybody's trying to get out of paying their full percentage of the tax. Everybody is. I damn sure am. I, 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 I'm, I don't really have a problem with this paying your fair share thing, right? And I feel like I pay a pretty hefty amount to the U.S. Treasury per year, right? Like, I am one of those people who gets to talk about uh, what it is that you out here doing with my tax dollars because I feel like my tax dollars can go a long way for the right people, right? And I don't really trip that hard on the tax thing. I don't, right? Like, you hit my check heavy. Okay, cool. It would be different if you were hitting my check after I got it. But since they take your money before you ever get your hands on it, you really don't even think about it that much, right? Like it's gone. By the time you get a chance to copy it, like it never actually gets to be your money, All right? So you don't like, you don't really think about it that much unless you just jive greedy, man. <laughs> I mean, that's it. At the same time, I got a tax man and I rock with that dude, right? Like, I'm not just handing my money over. That, that, that's not what it is. Like, you you know, regardless of how liberal you perceive me to be, um, I have said all along one thing for me. I mean, I know this don't apply to everybody, but, you know, there are a lot of things that could go wrong for me in a Trump administration. But the tax game might be crazy, crazy. And I ain't really about to protest by being like, no, I'm going to go back to paying 39.6. No, 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 no. Also get the feeling that the Trump tax game crazy is going to affect people who are playing a completely different game than I'm playing in terms of making money. Like, they're going to be like, wait, how much stock I got to have to get this? Right? You know, like, like, like it, it ain't for people like me to win. No, it is not. But at the same time, it ain't for people like me to lose. Anyway, I bring that up all to make the larger point that I don't think you're really going to rock the world by saying Trump figured out ways to not pay 39.6. Like, that's not really it. It's like, if you have to explain the significance of that, I think it's fair to ask the question if maybe, just maybe, you should have held up, right? Or if you're MSNBC, you let that man put that out in his outpost and then you bring him on to talk about it. But you don't, like, try to be the engine behind this. Like, yes, there's no new point to be made about Donald Trump's tax returns. Everybody understands the significance of those tax returns and why those tax returns could be important. Either they understand it or they absolutely don't care. Or they just made the decision that this is one of those things they're going to let ride for whatever reason, right? It's one of those two things. But you're not going to get on TV and have like 15 minutes of explanation of what the tax returns are going. No, 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 no. That's not going to be. You you need to come off. Like, I know you're trying to get viewers to stay on or whatever. Nah, 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 nah. You need to come off the rip being like, yo, here we got it. Boom, the full tax return. But it can't be no two pages. 
right? Now, I presume that the two pages became available and the rest will become available at some point. But you ain't about to do it with no two pages. That's, that's not, that's not going to be it. You want to look like Geraldo at Grant's tomb at this point. You can't do that. Like You had to have a little bit more than that to sell it that hard. I don't think there was any, like, and I guess everybody wants to make sure they write or first or make sure nobody else had it sent to them or anything else. But even if that's the case, you can't push it like, yo, we got his tax return. Nah, y'all got two pages of his tax return. Two pages. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're two fairly significant pages. But that, that ain't what nobody wants to see on those tax returns. Come on now. And even that, two pages off one year. And that's it. It's two pages off one year. No, nah, they, them, they set themselves up for a bad one because they, they oversold it. There's no other way to look at it. They oversold it, right? So like, even I, like I as a person who can go and read and see, okay, okay, this is, okay, I can see why you say this is important. Okay, I can see why this I can Okay, if you're having to explain that to me, I feel fairly confident saying you got no hope at the median. Like, if this is not self-evident, this ain't going to do what you want. It's just not. And they came out with something. They're like, this is a big deal. Now, let me tell you why. See, and that right there, nope, 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 nope. That's not going to work. That's, that's not how you're going to do it. That's not. And they went out with it the way that they did. And I wonder what happens if they ever get anything more, you know, significant than that. But I think, and I look, I've never worked as an editor or producer in this sort of context, but if I had to guess, I think that it was probably best for them to just pump the brakes just a little bit on that one. Just a little bit. Appreciate the question. Let me see what we got here. Did Snoop cross a line, if possible, in 2017 with his Trump video? Okay, so the Snoop video, it, it is, I mean, so what we got here, Snoop does a video, and there's like a puppet or a cartoon, whatever you want to call it, and there's vague intimation of coming behind this puppet or this thing, whatever it is. that It's like Donald Trump. It's like he's shooting Donald Trump. And it's not like he smokes Donald Trump with his blood all over the place. But, like, the gun goes bang, and that's basically what it is. And I'm like, hey, man, I don't really think that that was just the uh, – I don't know if that was the best idea, right? Like, one thing, one thing I do think is fair for anybody to say, man, we ain't really about to have no joking about shooting me. I mean, is that fair? Is that fair? Like, I just, I, I just, I just personally, just kind of as a rule, I don't think that you really need to be out here joking, but so much about shooting people. All right. I don't care if it's satire. I don't care what, nah, 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 nah. I just, I just, that's just me, right? Like, I don't think that this is the end of the world. I do not believe that this is the end of the world. But nah, I don't think that that was probably the best way to do it. And also, by the way, that's how you get them boys knocking at your door. Right? <laughs> like, like, that's the whole thing about it. That's how you get them boys knocking at your door. Uh, like, every time I see somebody say something on the internet with any sort of information about shooting Obama, I was always like, yo, do you think that they are not going to come knock on your door about this? Like, I personally personally would like to do the best I can to keep them off my telephone. I mean, who knows? It might be too late. I don't have a great answer for you there. But I myself would just like to keep them off my phone. You know? So, no. Like, I mean, I'm not outraged by what it was. I just think there's some ways that we do or do not play. And, like, I'm fairly consistent about this. When Rihanna did that Bitch Better Have My Money video that was about the accountant, I was like, yo, we need to be real about this, though. Like, this video is about killing a real person. <laughs> Like, if you're the real person, 
this, this is not what's hot. I, I understand her anger and her frustration, but I mean, I feel like I got to call the cops after that, right? I don't care if she shared with everybody. Like if she had mailed that directly to that dude's house, he would have no choice but to call the police and be like, yo, man, I think she's going to kill me. And I think she spent a million dollars. Let me know. You know, so, yeah, I don't think that I think there's some ways that you probably uh, should not play. Now, what I found to be very interesting is that I had a whole lot of young people come at me and try to like hit me with like the the old out of touch Uncle Tom card. Now, to be fair, I don't blame them for coming at me with the old out of touch card because I definitely noticed that most of the pushback I was getting was from people who were very young. And I like I get why young people are looking at me in that moment as such. And I really ain't tripping off their opinion like that. And it's not because I discount the contributions of the youth It's because I think that the way that a 23 year old person probably receives that is probably the same way that I would have received it when I was 23 years old. But I'm 36 now. I see these things just a little bit differently than I did before, right? And so I think there's room for an artistic statement. I just think that there's probably some better ways to do this, you know? But no, like, I ain't tripping. I ain't mad. Um, but yeah, I wonder why you're joking about shooting me. Like, me, myself, personally, I, I, I do not want to look at a video that is somebody acting like they're going to shoot a puppet. Like, I would not want that. I, I, and and I is regardless of what my feelings on Trump are, I can't get beyond the fact to be like, yo, I I really would not want that. I don't I don't think that would be very cool, you know. So I mean, if that's the way I feel about it, if that's the way I look at it, if it was me, I do have to look at it and be like, yeah, man, I think that might have been a little bit, you know, more than you should have done, you know. I mean, otherwise, like one thing. One thing I will try to tell you is that I'm not like, you know, the, the full on embodiment of the golden rule or anything like that. But I'm not going to make an argument for you that I would not like I'm not going to try to pass an argument across you that I myself would not believe. I'm just not going to do it. So I do feel like to an extent, if I look at that and see how I would view it, if it was me and be like, yeah, OK, I think that's probably going a little bit too far then I got to afford that belief and courtesy basically to anybody else. And that just happens to include Donald Trump. And coincidentally, I prefer to keep them boys off my phone, assuming that it is not too late to keep them off my phone. I don't think that they would hear anything too exciting on my phone, but you'd prefer they not be on the phone. But yeah, man, they was calling me down the time. Like I felt like Jesse Owens in 1968 in Mexico City. I was like, damn, man, on this? Like what happened when y'all love me for that T-shirt? Like, 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 is that is that all completely out the window now? Because I'm like, hey, probably shouldn't pretend like you're shooting people. Like, regardless of how satirical it was, probably shouldn't be acting like you're shooting people. Like, that's the Uncle Tom lie. And see, one thing about being called Uncle Tom is very, very interesting. I feel like you can learn a whole lot about people and what their experiences are and what their insecurities are. Uh, really by the way that they respond to being called an Uncle Tom. Because you, you call somebody an Uncle Tom and they just fly off the handle about it. Oh, man, there's pain behind that. There is a story behind that. And, by the way, occasionally, someone who you yourself might believe to be an Uncle Tom. That, that happens. You know what I mean? Like, that does, in fact, happen. Um, so, like, it's only cost me an Uncle Tom. I'm just like, wow, really? <laughs> We're going there here, of all places. Because, I mean, I know enough to know. Like, you're not going to make me feel insecure about my dedication to, you know, not being an Uncle Tom. Like, you're just not going to not gonna hit me there. Like, it's not like, oh, wow, you really got me. Yo, oh, man, it's like kicking me in the stomach. You call me an Uncle Tom. Oh, my gosh, everybody thinks I'm out here working for the man. Da, da, da. Nah, man, I will tell you straight up and down when I'm keeping quiet for the money. I always felt like that was one of the things that y'all respected about me. I will tell you straight up and down. If there's something I'm leaving alone because I'm trying to look out for his bread, I will tell you. Because Look, you have to understand. Um. Uh, it, 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 it ain't going to be like this at every, every job I got. 
So I don't need y'all to even think for a moment that I'm pretending like I am the fighting revolutionary spirit. Nah, 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 not right now. That day may come, and I ain't going to tell you anything that I don't believe. But no, sir, Rebob, I'll tell you. Like, sometimes we got to be real. I feel like that's the only way that you can respect me is if I let you know. Like, look, there's some things I'm going to have to leave alone because I don't know the terrain, and it ain't worth the risk. Like, I tell you that. I'll be the one to tell you that straight up and down. And being that I'll be the one to tell you that straight up and down, you can call me an Uncle Tom until you are blue in the face. You and your partners can do it. I don't care who y'all are. That's the one where I'm just kind of like, yeah, okay. I did have a dude one time call me randomly um, to convince me that he was not an Uncle Tom. And that was a really, really, really peculiar conversation to have with somebody, right? It's a long story as to how this came to be. But I wound up on the phone and like basically the long and the short was that I felt like it was a long, let me explain to you why it is that I'm not an Uncle Tom. And I mean, I just really stopped and thought, man, there's some real pain behind that to where you feel like you need to get on the phone with somebody and like a stranger, mind you, like somebody I never talked to before. And I wasn't even really famous at that point. But, you know, it was one of those things where it's just like, yo, there's like some real, real pain behind this. And I really feel bad for that person as they were talking to me about this because I could really hear just this went back with him. And I was just like, yeah, I can't really relate to that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's just that's never been my burden. Oh, hope it works out for you. Anyway, appreciate the question. Let me see what we've got here. Oh, yeah. How soon before some men in suits pay Lil Bow Wow a visit? Yeah, I don't know what Lil Bow Wow was thinking. And I guess he doesn't want to be called Lil Bow Wow anymore. But I feel like when you do something like Lil Bow Wow did, I don't feel like you got no say so when anybody calls you. I mean, Lil Bow Wow got on the Twitter and said something to Donald Trump and about Snoop and said that they would take Donald Trump's wife and have her on the street working for them. And I'm like, Lil Bow Wow, have you lost your ever loving mind? Why, why in the world would you, what would possess you to say this in public young man? Like really, really, like 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 what what would make you believe that that is a thought that you needed to share? We're going to put the first lady on the stroll. Bow wow, that's not something you can do. Like, like, no, no, no. I, I, I just, yeah, yeah somebody got to go. I mean, I'm just not mad at them when they come knock on your door for that one. I mean, and when they do, I feel like you need to look them in the eye when they done, be like, you know what? I went too far and I apologize. Because sometimes it's got to be just like some basic measures of decency out here. And that is preposterous. That is absolutely preposterous. By the way, Lance said if Bow Wow met up with Sugar Free, he would quickly realize he is not a pimp. Yeah, now Sugar Free, Sugar Free, yeah, that that is a pimp. That yeah, that is that right there is a pimp. And see, here's the thing about pimping, and I've thought about this many times because there's like like okay, there is a great, significant, giant piece of kind of the history of black folks and entertainment that is the pimp right so you have the 70s and the movies with the pimps you have the emphasis on pimping um in the hip-hop like the pimp is a figure and the thing about the pimp that kind of makes it tricky is that as objectionable as you can find the notion of the pimp to be Pimps do have a tendency to be charming and entertaining. After all, how else, like, how do you make this pimping thing work in the first place? I mean, they're asking for a lot. 
you know, like being charming and entertaining is kind of part of the game. And so it can be very easy to like dismiss and downgrade like how horrific the idea of pimping is because the people who like are the pimps often make you laugh. Like I fully understand and I get this because I slip on this myself. Look, I'm Southern, man. I grew up listening to Southern rap. We talk about pimping like pimping is a positive thing, right? Like I get that, you know? As a result, I think this fool Bow Wow somehow thought that you could just get on Twitter and talk about putting the first lady on the stroll. And you cannot. <laughs> like, no. Oh, you just can't, you just can't do that. Like, does Bow Wow have a job right now? Because, like, if I employed Bow Wow, Bow Wow would be fired. Is Bow Wow still on cash money? Because I'd have to drop him from the label. Like, yo, man, you are ridiculous. It's out of your mind. I disconnect any connection I had to old stupid Bow Wow after that. Good gracious. You're going to have your wife working. No, you're not going that. There are many things that you gentlemen have been able to pull off in your careers that is amazing, right? Like, against all odds. But this is a miracle you ain't about to make happen. So given that, I don't think you should even pretend to such. Appreciate the question. Let me see what we got here. Any chance Dave Chappelle coming back is Jordan in 01, not Jordan in 95. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Now, this is very interesting because Dave Chappelle has been on tour, and I guess Daniel, who asked this question, has not seen Dave on tour. And I don't blame you for having these questions if you have not seen Dave because somehow since I moved to Miami, I think I've managed to see Dave live three times. And the first couple times were like in the pretty good to very good range, you know. And when you got something like seeing Dave live that you really want to do, you want to tell yourself how great it is. And sometimes you just kind of have to stop and look back and think it was pretty good, but it wasn't too spectacular, right? You know, when when like I was I was there for a moment that I'll never forget. Now, Dave was here, I guess, just like a month and change ago. And we went to go see him and he was so incredibly funny. I can't begin to explain it. Um, and so here's the thing about comedians that is interesting, even though Dave took a little time off or whatever. But I noticed something about comedy shows. I haven't gone to a few recently. One thing about comedy shows is it is almost without fail that the acts get funnier from the opener to whoever's at the end. It doesn't matter how great the talent is that's the last comic before the headliner. The headliner is always older and always funnier because people just don't really stop being funny. Right? Like, they might stop doing stand-up. They might get out of practice a little bit. But people just don't stop being funny. So, like, we went to go see Bruce Bruce a couple months ago. And the cats that over for Bruce Bruce were really funny, right? Like, they're going to wind up getting somewhere. They were really funny. And Bruce Bruce is so much funnier than all of them, right? Just, like, mind-blowing funny. Like, my buddy James, uh, James Davis. I went and saw him when he was here at the Improv, and he was opening for uh, D-Ray Davis. James has gotten really good at stand-up. He was really funny, man. But D-Ray been doing this a long time, man. And cats, if you keep doing it, you get better, right? 
D Ray just is, I mean, just a different kind of funny. Now, Dave took a little time off from doing this, but Dave been back doing shows now for like three, four years. And last time I saw Dave, he was good. Like, really, really good. So, like, if they're doing that for a special, I'm pretty sure it's going to be hilarious. And it's, like, really smart stuff. Like, I mean, it's just he's he's on stride. And I was talking to somebody um, in New Orleans who's kind of got some connections to, you know, people around Dave. And they're like, yo, he's really, like, this isn't no reclusive superstar shit anymore, right? Like, this is, I think he's comfortable with the idea of coming back on top because he's doing all this on his own terms. So, I mean, it could be Jordan and Owen, but you got to remember this, man, being a comedian and, like, doing the Netflix stuff, Jordan had some games in 01 where he was killing it. All Dave got to do is put one or two of those on film. That's it. Appreciate the question. Let's see what else we got here. Do you think the latest Mike Brown video will change anything? I'm very curious as to what people think that video would change. Uh, the reaction to it, I think, like, okay, so, you know, this is the one where there's a video that gives you reason to believe that Mike Brown had conducted a marijuana transaction at the counter of the Ferguson market. And... I do agree with the idea that it's kind of difficult to understand how you're going to get a couple of boxes of Rillos in exchange for the weed, and you're like, no, y'all keep the Rillos back there. I'm going to come back and get them. I've never really heard of anything working that way. Like, I admit that, that it seems to be a bit of a, like, strange sort of transaction. That being said, it sure did look like he came in there with some weed and left it there. I'd like a little more explanation of that part, right? Because I see that the people at, you know, the people at the store, of course they got to be like, no, this isn't true. Cause they can't just have it look like they out here buying weed at the cash register. Like, that's a horrific idea. Right. But I feel like there aren't as many answers about that part of it as it is people being concerned with the idea that basically, so basically it, it's pushing this idea that this all started because they said that Mike Brown was a suspect in a robbery at the Ferguson market when, in fact, it was not a robbery. And then everything goes from there. Now, of note, it only matters if the officer knew that there was a robbery there. And I think that's always been the cop's story is that Darren Wilson knew that. Whatever it is. Like, fighting the narrative on this one, to me, seems to be a bit counterproductive. Like, not to say that a change or some factual basis on the narrative is useless, but it didn't, like, have me shaken or have me upset because no matter what happened, the outcome was going to be what the outcome was. It never mattered in the first place whether or not the dude robbed the market or stole the cigarillos that never mattered. So I don't care whether or not that part of it is true. Like, I feel like getting invested in that part in large measure is getting invested in the distraction. And I have no like real desire to like get caught up in the distraction. I don't. So I do understand why people want the truth to be what the truth is, and they want the truth to be known, certainly. But this isn't, I do, you know, agree and believe in the idea that this isn't really changing anything. There's nothing to change, right? Darren Wilson says he was afraid he was going to die, so he shot him. That's it. Like, that's all it takes. Like, that, I think that's the part that we have to remember here. That remains all it takes 
is there right there. Hey, man. Fear for my life. So I personally ain't too worried about no cigarillos. I personally ain't too worried about whether or not the dude took the rillos. I don't care if he walked in there and like stole the whole back row of cigarettes. Like none of that seems to me to be germane as to whether or not it had to be the Mike Brown guy shot. And the actual answer to that, you're never going to get. You're never going to get it. And that's the ship that sailed. All this other background noise. I'm sorry. I filtered that out a long time ago. I ain't know y'all was really listening with it. Appreciate the question. Let me see. Obama out here living. Is he ever coming back to politics? Like, so when you say coming back to politics, I mean, like, come back where? Like, what's he going to do? Like, create a startup government and go from there? Like, I mean, after you've been the president of the United States, I mean, every other job in one way or another involves you working for somebody. Which one of them jobs are you about to go do after being the president of the United States? Like, you realize how people treat you when you're the president of the United States? You can't go get no job nowhere else because you ain't never getting that level of deference ever again because you were the president of the United States. Right? Obama ain't about to, what Obama, what, 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 what Obama about, to go, about to go do? Run for the Senate? Word? You think so? What Obama going to do? Uh, run for, go move to some state? And run for governor? Why? For who? For what? Obama, I, I mean, Obama going to do some kind of work, but Obama has gone to work for the last day in his life. He ain't never going back to work. No, sir, Reba. Ain't no way in the world. Eight years of that, man, Obama ain't going to go nowhere. Obama might write some books. Obama about to go see the world, about to go take some, you know, like I don't know if it's safe for him and his wife to take a cruise. But I feel like they would really have fun going on a cruise. Don't you think they look like the sort of couple that would have a great time on a cruise? I feel like Michelle want to take him on the time join a cruise. Obama, they, I don't think Obama necessarily really want to go on it. But I think Michelle just want to go hear Frankie Beverly. I think she can get him to go. I think that's what we need to do. We need a, a petition or a GoFundMe or something to get Obama on the time join a cruise. Because I really think that the two of them would really enjoy a cruise. I really, really think they would. Man, I know Obama about to, be going, about, to, about to come back to politics. He might go teach a class somewhere. He might have to be no dumb politics. What's out of your mind? Appreciate the question. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> what do you think about the concept of going viral? It applies to everything from mindless entertainment to catching illegal activities by a public official it's a crazy powerful new age phenomenon it ain't really no new age phenomenon man i mean everybody's always been trying to find a way to make something catch on the thing is what catches on is a lot more like fleeting now well i don't know if fleeting is the right word to put it but it is a lot more demand driven like it's harder for you to convince people of how dope something is before it comes out now like people make these decisions on their own. You know, they get the snippets early and everything else, but they make those calls themselves. So you don't really get to tell people. So what happened now is 
People are just trying to figure out what's going to catch. They're trying to get in early. The thing about something being viral, though, is that it really depends on what exactly you're talking about. So, like, you know, we had the video on how the questionable Dan interviewed the guy, the high, uh, the kid, the guy that was coaching um, some eight-year-olds in basketball, and one of them was going to the wrong basket, and so he got up and he just blocked his shot, right? And so that video went viral. And so it's cool that that went viral, but what does that mean? Right. Like it's a moment. It's fleeting. It goes. It passes. And so like that's what viral is like viral, I guess, is no different than like the phenomenon of any other one hit wonder. You know, if you if you like extrapolate the idea of the one hit wonder and apply it to other stuff, I mean, that's basically what viral is. There's nothing new about that. Right. I mean, everybody has been trying to play that game in one way or another to suit one agenda or another. The difference is now, man, people are trying to figure out a way to make money off that. And so people are clamoring for it because they feel like they, I mean, they find a way to make some cash off of it. But yeah, I mean, but that's always going to be the game. Always. I hope that made sense. I'm tired. Appreciate the question. Any new childhood stories between you and your brother? So this is a, um, I have to say, a, a fascinating way to phrase a question. And I, I say that it is a fascinating way to phrase a question because I am 36 years old. Uh, my brother is 49 years old. And well, that makes it kind of impossible for us to have any new childhood stories. Like, we, we, we really can't just crank any new ones up. Like, this is the thing you got to understand is the story game, you can't be the story jukebox, right? Stories have to come up organically in some discussion, right? They have to be tangentially connected to what you're talking about or used as some sort of analogy or anything else. But you can't just hit somebody and be like, yo, give me uh, a story about your brother. No, no, no. You got to at least guide me in some direction if you really want me to give you one. But the thing is, me and my brother got stories, but it's but so many because we're 13 years apart. Like, I grew up in a lot of ways like an only child. You know, because, you know, they grown, they gone, they doing all this stuff. You know, like when we moved to Houston, my sister was in college. My brother was in college. I was seven years old, right? Like everybody was out of there by that point. But now, nah, man, unfortunately, I can't just uh, manufacture new childhood stories on a whim. I wish I was that gifted, right? Maybe something will come up. But I also don't be remembering half the stuff I tell y'all. I'll tell y'all some. But I don't, really, like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really keep an index of them like that. Appreciate the question. Let's see what else we got here. Do you believe that Janet secretly had a child? Yeah, I saw something about this the other day. So apparently some woman is claiming that she is the child of Janet Jackson and James DeBarge. Do I have that right? Um, so here's my question. If they were able to prove that she was Janet Jackson's daughter, did Janet have to pay all that back child support? I mean, I'm just wondering, you know, I don't really understand how these things work necessarily. I mean, do I think she secretly had a kid? No, nah, probably not. I also don't really care. But I mean, I guess I find that to be somewhat unlikely that they would be able to keep 
a full on child secret in that way. I just want to know like how that works for Janet Jackson. Cause I feel like somebody might want to consider putting in a claim. I feel like you can get some cash for that. Right. I mean, maybe there was some paperwork already drawn up or whatever it is, but you know, that contract probably ain't so airtight. Joe probably wrote it in his own handwriting. So like, yeah. Can you like go look into that? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, can somebody put in the paperwork and see if they can get back on? I mean, I think that that is a fair and interesting question to ask. Don't you agree? I don't know. Appreciate the question. Let's see what else you got here. Yeah, we got to 957. I'm proud of myself. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us here on The Evening Jones. We try to get this done once a week, but we ain't perfect. My man Lance Gilliam handles everything behind the scenes. Thank you, sir. Remember, if you miss anything live, check out The, check out the Evening Jones podcast. Subscribe to the iTunes store. Subscribe at Stitcher Radio. Check us out on SoundCloud. Also, you can subscribe at the Google Play Store. Try to catch you guys next week. Take it easy.